Hi, this is uh, John Smith with uh, Green Tree Bank. Uh, can I help you? Yeah, hi, John. This is Tom Harchi. I'm with Integrity Capital. Uh, I just wanted to to reach out and speak with somebody there who can uh, give me some details on on your commercial lending programs. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, that's me. So. Oh, oh, I'm great. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So. Well, uh, just a, a quick little bit about us. Uh, uh, it won't take too much of your time, but um, we're Integrity Capital. We're a, a commercial mortgage broker. Uh, we're 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 based in Scottsdale, Arizona, but we we work with clients nationwide and just reaching out to find out some details on your lending program. Uh, see if we uh, might be able to send some some clients your way, but want to find out you know what sort of clients you're looking for and looking for proactive partners that we can uh, work with. Uh, do you have a, a few minutes to, to discuss what your lending programs are? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, great. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, and you, I see that you're in uh, Arizona. Uh, do you do you do any sort of lending outside of Arizona, or what sort of regions do you lend in? Uh, we are actually uh, just in um, two states. So we are uh, Texas. Uh, and Arizona. Those are the two areas that we focus on. Okay, Texas and Arizona. Um, and we can, okay, we can like follow clients. Like if we have a local client here in, you know, uh, Arizona, you know, we can follow somebody to a different state, but those are kind of the two primary areas that we focus on. Okay, I see. So if I've got a, a client that's like a here in Arizona, you might be able to help them out outside of state then? Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, good. As long as we've developed a relationship with them. Okay. I follow you. That makes sense. So existing commercial relationship, is that going to be an existing account or do they need an actual commercial loan with you here in Arizona? Yeah. You know, I, I would say they have to have roots here. They'd have to, you know, have a maybe a home here. We'd have to have some sort of depository relationship with them. Okay. Um, so there, there has to be something at least substantive for us to, to justify it. Okay. I follow you. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, and then uh, what, what sort of lending do you do primarily? Are you just doing kind of conventional stuff? Do you do anything SBA, USDA, stuff like that? Um, you know, we, we can, we can do SBA, you know, I would say most, most of what we do is just, you know, maybe owner occupied, um, you know, um, you know, local business relationships that we can do C and I lending uh, as well as just commercial real estate uh, owner occupied acquisition, uh, you know, is, is probably more of a box. We can do investment properties. Oh, okay. Um, so we can look at, you know, apartments and office and retail. We're a little, little leery of retail right now, but, um, but I would say, you know, we could definitely, look at uh you know industrial and, and some of those uh as well okay um and i'm i'm, I'm i haven't been doing this for too long i'm, I'm a little little new in the commercial world you used a, a term i wasn't familiar with it was c and i okay what, what, what does c and i cover exactly yeah so that's um you know sort of um you know the the commercial element of you know lines of credit so, oh, okay. You know, so I see. These are like, you know, could be um, a, a line of credit for somebody. It could be a business uh, line. It could be accounts receivable that we're going to lend against uh, okay. for their business. And so, um, so th those are sort of the uh, the elements, I guess, of CNI that we're. We're talking. Okay, I understand. All right, thank thank you for for clearing that up. And um, do you, do you do you do some do you do anything construction wise or anything like that? Yeah, we do construction. Uh, we would definitely do uh, vertical construction and can for again owner occupied buildings for mm -hmm. um, investment properties. Um, it does get a little bit trickier if it's an investment property because we'd have to make sure. That there's either pre-leasing, if it's, or or just understand that the market is really supportive uh, of that particular asset type, you know. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I understand. So yeah, obviously, want something that will uh, generate income, so that makes sense. Yes. Um, now, and and you mentioned uh, not 
you guys aren't too big on retail right now, um, but you, you do like industrial. Uh, what other sort of properties uh, do you guys like to lend on? Or are you keen on over there? Yeah, I would say uh, we like self-storage. Uh, we like industrial. Um, retail's okay as long as there's, you know, good location. There's an anchor, you know, uh, tenant in there. Uh, we like, um, um, we do like car washes. So we can, we can do car washes. We do not like hotels. Okay. So that's definitely a no-no for us. Um, okay, no hotels. Office, we're a little iffy on unless it's owner-occupied. Okay. And um, just because, you know, with COVID and everything, it's been a little tricky. But um, mm -hmm. I would say apartments, we're definitely, um, we like as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would say those, those are kind of the food groups that we like. Okay. Uh, will you guys do anything? Uh, you mentioned office. Will you will you do anything medical office? I know that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, done all right through COVID. Yeah, okay. we can definitely do medical office for sure. Okay. Um, you know, if you start getting into special purpose properties where it's a um, a surgery center or something, it gets a little tricky. But mm -hmm. I would say just general medical office, we are are definitely hip to uh, for sure. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, and then, what what sort of loan amounts are you are, are you guys uh, entertaining over there? Yeah. Um, you know, we could do anything from you know two hundred fifty thousand all the way up to our lend legal lending limit uh, is um, technically forty million, but our in house really is just more along the lines of. You know, probably 12 to 15. I mean, typically to one borrower. So the legal lending limit is just how much we can lend to one borrower. Um, okay. Per per our uh, charter. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, what would you say your average deal size is o o over there? Probably, I, I would say five to six million. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, when when you're doing those loans, as far as loan to value goes um, on investment properties, uh, where, where are you lending up to? Or I guess, um, you know, I guess where are you normally approving loans at on loan to value? Um, for owner occupied conventionally, we can go up to 80% loan to value as long as it doesn't exceed the uh, appraised value. Okay. Um, the uh, um, for investment properties, I would say the max we can do is 75, but honestly, we're probably doing most up around 70. Okay. Um, so that that's the loan to value that we typically focus on. Okay. Um, and what sort of terms are you guys lending on there as far as, uh, you know, amortization and, and actual, um, you know, term for the loan? Uh, we do not go past 25 years amortization. Okay. Um, our terms are usually five, seven, and 10 years, uh, but we rarely ever fix it for more than five. So it's usually like okay. a five plus five. So if it's 10 year term, it's five years and then adjust and then fix for another five. We're going off of the, um, the uh, LIBOR um, okay. and uh, plus a spread. Uh, and um, that's how we determine a rate. Uh, we don't rate lock until we actually close. Um, so the rate just oh, okay. floats until Floating we until close. Um, do, you, do, do you do anything with interest only on, on the loans when you're uh, on these deals or? Yeah, the, the only time we do interest only is, is for construction. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, there might be a case where it's a bridge loan or something like that for uh, someone that's turning it around, but it really has to be a construction like a construction component to it. Otherwise it's just not, it's not our not kind of our cup of tea. So. Okay. Yeah. And then as far as the, you know, the, you know, the rate you're saying it's LIBOR uh, plus a spread, you know, what, what would the typical rates be on, on, you know, deals that you're approving right now, um, you know, with, with just, you know, past, you know, uh, three or four months, I guess. Yeah, it's um, we've seen things hovering around three, 
three and three quarters up to four and a quarter has been kind of the range, just depending on the risk and the, you know, the client. And obviously, if we have a relationship with them that they bring over deposits um, and we bank them, then mm -hmm. we usually can make some concessions on the interest rate to be a little bit lower uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And, and then are you charging um, origination fees on, on deals or what, 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 what percentage yeah, are, is it a flat I, I, fee? Yeah, we typic, typically are three quarters of point to a point. Um, <clears throat> we can definitely make adjustments if it's, uh, if it's necessary. Uh, we usually don't go less than a half a point. Um, you know, we do charge, um, <clears throat> we do have a dock fee of seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, that we charge, uh, we do have a legal fee of another seven fifty uh, for for the transaction, and then just your standard third party reports, which we need an appraisal and an, a phase one environmental report, and that's just whatever um, whatever they're going to you know to charge is what what it is. Okay. And then uh, on the closing of the loan, do you have a, an exit fee or a prepayment penalty or anything like that normally? Um, we do. We have a step down prepay, uh, which is usually a five, four, three, two, one. Uh, sometimes we can do a three, two, one, just depends. Uh, but that's fairly normal for us. And we generally are. Um, um, you know, tip, typically we, we, we can sometimes do what's considered um, um, like a soft prepay where if someone sells it, uh, we're, we're not going to charge a fee, but they are for if it's a refinance. Okay. So if they sell the building, they wouldn't have to pay the prepayment penalty then. Okay. Um, and then how, what's your, what's your uh, process like in general? You know, we, we like to work with uh, lenders that are proactive and, and um, you know, have a clear kind of <clears throat> process and low red tape. Is that, is that kind of how you describe your process? Or I guess kind of walk me through it if you can, please. Yeah. Um, so, so what would happen is you, you would contact me with some, some preliminary stuff about the deal, like, you know, maybe a couple of years of tax returns and a personal financial statement and a little summary on the deal, what they're looking to do. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I would do is I would uh, just quickly kind of go through that. I'd probably let you know whether I felt like it was a fit or not up front. Uh, I would give you just some general idea of what the terms might look like. If you were okay with that and your client what I would do is I would take it in. So we have uh, two layers of committee. The first one for anything that's under $2 million, uh, it's just me and one other signer. Uh, and so I just run it by my chief credit officer. Uh, he and I just kind of walk through it. If he, uh, if he likes it, he says green light. What we do is I'll collect a full package uh, from you, all the tax returns, you know, everything we need. Uh, we would prepare a little write-up. I uh, would take it into a pre-flight review with them uh, and then uh, uh, come back to you with the term sheet. Uh, once the term sheet is signed and uh, sent back to me with a deposit, deposit usually is about $1,000, then what we'll do is we will, um, we will get uh, you know, a full write-up together for committee and then we'll run it uh, into committee uh, just to sign off come back to you with a commitment letter. Uh, the commitment letter is uh, uh, signed off. And then what we'll do is we will order uh, um, third party reports. So the appraisal and the phase one that usually takes about three weeks plus some time to review. And then uh, we're just preparing everything. So when it comes back, we'll have loan documents ready and that's usually about a week or so uh, to, to close. So that's typically our timeline uh, to, to, to go. Okay. So you, it sounds like you guys do some legwork up front on it, um, before it gets to a point where, where third parties and uh, would be ordered. 
Um, and then after third parties, it's probably another week um, to close. Would you would you say it's probably about uh, you know three weeks for third parties? Would you say it's about five weeks to close the deal, or um, what's I guess on the last yeah. deal that you closed? What were the number of days it took? Usually sixty days is pretty normal for us. Okay, that's a, that's a fairly typical time for us to close is is uh, sixty days. Okay, so start to finish. Okay. And then, you know, is there any opportunity to, you know, obviously, you know, um, borrower would be in a little jeopardy of losing out on this, but is there any opportunity to order third parties up front if we have a tight time frame and, and shorten that or? Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can do that. They just have to know there's a risk that, you know, if it doesn't get approved, they spent the money, but yes. Okay. That they, okay. We've done that before. We've closed in 45 days, you know, so it's it's definitely doable. Okay. Um, and then if, if we have larger deals, you know, if, if we've got something that's over that $2 million mark, is it, is, you know, you were mentioning it's kind of one, you know, you and one other signing off on that. Is is it a, a, a length, much lengthier process if the loans are over $2 million? Um, yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's a little bit, there's another layer of committee. So we, we have to go in that typically takes an extra week. Uh, there's about five people that have to sign off on it if it goes above the 2 million. Uh, and so that, that obviously adds more time uh, to the transaction as well. So, okay. And then and, all and, that, it's the same. Okay. And is everybody involved in the committee? Are they all uh, located in in Arizona and Texas, or are they, you know, how how yeah, difficult it is to get them it's, together? Uh, it's actually all remote board, uh, so they're they're between both places. Okay. Uh, and they get the write up <clears throat> to review uh, a couple of days before, and then we actually have the committee every uh, every other week. And uh, so then that usually is goes on for a couple hours. And once we come out, we either have a yes or we have a no. Okay. Okay. So that can definitely add time if we miss a yeah. committee and it's every other yeah. week. Okay. Good Absolutely. to know that. Um, and then as far as the, the underwriting pieces for your, uh, for your committee, you know, is uh, what's, what sort of cash flow are your underwriters looking for on these properties? Uh, they want, we, we need to have a 1.25 debt service coverage ratio. Uh, okay. that is, that is on all owner occupied stuff. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, for the investor, we need a 1.3, uh, debt okay. coverage ratio. So th those are the cash flow. And, and also just so you know, the, that, we, we are very hip on secondary source of repayment. So we need to make sure that, that uh, we have a secondary source of repayment and they have to at least break even on that. Uh, otherwise that, that will be a big issue for us. Okay, can, can, as far as secondary source of repayment, um, can you uh, give me a little more detail on what you'd be looking for on something yeah, like that? Yeah, so basically what we do is we run a cash flow. Uh, there's the primary business that we run a cash flow and that has to service the debt. But you know, we look at their personal cash flow to see if they have the ability to take care of their own personal debts, like their mortgage, uh, like their car, uh, any loans they have, living expenses. We we just need to make sure that they have the ability to um, to actually uh, you know uh, cover their debts. Um, a lot of times people are bleeding. And so there might be at a 0.6 debt service coverage ratio on their global uh, personal, you know, just their sort of secondary source repayment. And then that means that they're having to take money from the other place to get it. So, so yeah, so it's, that's really important that we show um, that they can, they can take care of their own personal obligations. Okay. That makes sense. So they're not personally overloaded with that. And, uh bringing the deal down essentially I follow yeah. okay uh, and then do you, do you do any any lending with limited or no recourse no we're, we are a, a full recourse lender okay. um, so we don't we don't do anything non-recourse um, 
yeah so I, I i would say you know if if we'd even entertained non-recourse it would be under the pretense that um you know it was um you know under the pretense that it's basically like 50 percent low the value type of thing oh okay i see all right so very very secure deals and, and whatnot um Okay. Do you do you require the the borrowers or the clients to come in with any sort of uh, showing cash reserves or liquidity, or if so, what sort of what sort of amount are you looking for there? Um. Yeah, they have to. The borrowers have to. You know, on owner occupied stuff, you don't want to see a couple months of reserves post closing. Uh, and I would say, if it's new construction on investment, we definitely need to see probably, you know, five to 10% uh, liquidity uh, post-closing, you know? So liquidity, okay. look, we're very big on liquidity and that people have the ability to have some some cushion. So that's a that's a big deal for us, for sure. Okay, okay. Um, and then on, uh, do, do you do any sort of cash out uh, refinancing? Uh, we can do cash out, although we're not, uh, overly excited about it uh it'd, it'd have to be a pretty good excuse we won't allow people to pull out more than they have in there and we usually have to have at least 15 percent uh of their own cash still into it just from a regulatory perspective uh so that's that is a you know big deal to us to to make sure that they still have cash okay i understand that makes sense and then what about clients that, that might have had past uh, credit issues? Um, you know, if it's like a bankruptcy or a foreclosure, if there's a, a good story to it, uh, is that something where you would, you would entertain and, and help a client? Or are you looking for clients with, with no credit issues at all? Um, you know, it's just case by case. You know, they have to have, we just need to understand the story. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say we're open to it. But uh, you know, if we if we feel like there's a character issue there, that could become a real big problem for us. So we're just okay. look, we're looking for the people's character. And so if the story is such that the character is intact, then I think we're we're in good shape. Okay, um, great. That that answers most of my questions. And before I let you go, I, I've got this number I contacted you at, and if I could just make sure I've got a good email address to contact yeah. you at in the future. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is J S M I T H at green tree bank.com. So great. if you want to send me off your contact information and, uh, I'll, I'll send you back mine and, and let's, uh, definitely stay in touch. If you have anything you have, you know, you've got on the plate, you know, shoot it over my way. We'd love to try to, to, to help you out. Yeah, no, I appreciate appreciate your time. And yeah, if I, I'll send you an email and if you can include me on any sort of distributions you guys send out, if uh, you're sending any sort of, uh, uh, you know, rates and term sheets out, I always like to stay in the loop on that stuff. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Uh, appreciate That's right. it. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you and uh, we'll uh, we'll stay in touch. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. Have a good day.